Hey, what's going on YouTube? I'm Sean from Start to Finish Gaming and welcome back to Ark Survival Evolved here on the brand new Xbox Series X. Guys, in the last episode, we took on the Manticore with our Lightning Wyvern Army. If you guys haven't checked out that video, in the right-hand corner right about now is a link sending you on over there. So definitely check out that video, then come on back to this one. But today, guys, today we begin back on the island because we won. We beat the Manticore and everything. And before you guys comment or anything, yes, the trophy behind me, I did, in fact, have to spawn in here on the island because, interestingly enough, you can transfer over the banner, you could transfer over the dermis that we got, um, everything else you can transfer. Not the trophy wall mount though, which is a little weird, but I felt like it was necessary to change out to the mana core before we had the death worm. So today guys, like I said, today we are back on the island here and I want to get a few things started. Um, here's the thing. Um, we have this Megatherium that we ended up getting in, I don't remember which episode, I want to say maybe three or four episodes ago, this was the one on Scorched Earth. I want to get a female, um, and here's why. I want to start getting ready for the Broodmother. The Broodmother would be the next real fight at this point that we're going to need to do. On top of that, um, which means we're going to head over to the Redwoods, basically. On top of that, while we're there, we're going to use the Dire Bear and try to get some honey, because I did try this um, when we got these uh, Dire Bears over on Crystal Isles, and it didn't really work. Um, and that's because, apparently, you cannot use the Dire Bear Swipe, whatever it does, to get honey in the honey caves on Crystal Isles. The only way is for you to go in there with a the pick um, and kind of just start hitting it. Unfortunately, that will cause the bees to aggro you, so it is what it is. And then we're going to bring the Thylo along with us, so that's why I kind of had these three right here ready to go. But, guys, I'm really happy to be back on the island, honestly. I did mention that I did want to spend more time and did wanted to do these bigger projects on Scorched Earth, but... I'm happy to be done with it, I'm gonna be honest. Oh, on top of that, I actually have one more dino to introduce you guys to. This is our newest otter. I actually went through and bred them all up, and his name is is uh, Cute Patoots. <laughs> I really like the name, but um, I freaking love these things. That's honestly why. So what we're gonna do, though, is fully imprinted. These are the stats. We're looking at 359 in health, 810 stamina, 64 in weight, and 324 melee damage. Now, just so you guys know, if you bump up melee damage, they will get a hypo and a hyperthermic boost, um, which is great to have them on your shoulders and everything like that. Um, on top of that, guys, um, this is the only creature in Ark that can actually have more than one artifact at a time in its inventory, which is why this is by far my favorite shoulder mount, honestly. Out of all of them, the Otter is the best for the reason that we can pick up multiple artifacts, and as long as he has the weight, he can hold, he can literally do 60 pounds of art, of just artifacts. It's absolutely crazy. So the two things that I would level up with this guy are going to be melee uh, for the hypo and the hyperthermic boost and weight. So we could just hold as much as possible, honestly. So for right now, um, again, we have a decent amount of um, fortitude on us. So I'm not really too, too worried about a hypo and hyperthermic right now. But it's definitely good to get your um, otter with a lot of melee because eventually when we do a dino wipe, we won't really need fortitude as long as we have this guy on us, which that's an extra 20 plus levels that we could put on some other stuff. So let me get all set here. We're going to head on over to the Redwoods in order to get ourselves not only some honey, but also hopefully a mate for this Megatherium. Uh, the honey will end up needing to start getting into Extraordinary Kibble, and obviously the Megatheriums are the best way to go when taking on the Brood Mother. So we'll see what happens when we get on over there, but I'm really, really excited for this adventure. I hope you guys are too. Actually, guys, I totally forgot. Before we go to, just a little update to the base. Um, we do have a industrial cooker, finally, which is awesome. I also went out and made two cryo fridges, just to make it a little bit easier. Um, on top of that, I have started to do the Valentine's Day event that's actually already activated on here. Um, so, I've been breeding a ton of wyvern eggs, because wyvern's eggs are what we're going to use for extraordinary kibble. And we've gotten a few of these little heart things, which is what you actually used for... Um, you can use it to actually tame, you can also use it to, um, 
to um, heal your dinos, but at the same time, it's also one of the things that you'd need um, in order to do the skins and stuff like that. And I've actually already gotten a few of these little candies too, which the candies give you a speed boost, but on top of that, um, they can be used to make some of the holiday items. Now, um, I'm looking over the holiday items. Again, there's nothing really that I want. I when it comes to these skins and stuff like that, I, it just gets a little too crazy. And the emotes, I don't really use them, so I don't really see a need to do them. But the chibis is a big one, um, because there's a couple of chibis that they just came out with. It's the Crystal Wyvern, there's also a Mesopithecus, which would be really cool. There's also an Otter, too. So I'm going to get a little bit of wood here. Uh, wood, 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 wood just so we could start this up, and then who knows, maybe we'll actually get some stuff. But I'm really just going to focus on the chibis, and to be honest, there are a ton of chibis at this point. We're usually rocking the reindeer. Um, if you guys noticed, I actually brought up the shine horn at this point, because it is well past Christmas at this point. So I think the holiday one just kind of has to go, let's put it that way, and we'll see what we can get. But I think we're just going to do all uh, four chibis, and we'll just do random. And if one is really good here, this will kind of be the new one that we'll go around with. But let's see what we got. Uh, all right, so we have a mantis. Uh, manta, sorry. Ooh, okay. We got a um, kangaroo. We got a beaver. And last but not least, we got a regular reindeer. <laughs> Alright, so I'm going to be honest, uh, probably all four are going to go away, unless this is the bunny one, which would be really cool. No, it's not. It's just the normal one. Eh, not really a fan. Um, so my favorite one out of the group that right here is, in fact, our shine horn already. So I'm going to take all four of these. Um, and I think we have a couple in here that I'm not too much of a fan of. Um, the glow tail, I'm not really into anymore. So we'll get rid of this. Uh, and then we'll get rid of these two carcanoses. I don't really know what why this happens. But whenever it's the aberration expansion pack or the... Um, extinction expansion pack. If you guys notice, it's very, very laggy right now. Um, once I get out of literally the feather light, you'll see that the frames slow down incredibly. I don't know what it is. And then once I get out of it, we're okay. We can move no problem. I meant everything. Everything looks smooth. And then again, I'll go into the Karkonos over here and you'll see that everything just, it, it like jitters. Um, it's really, really weird. So I really just don't like having the extinction ones or anything. Interestingly, though, once they're on, like once you actually have been using them and everything, mm -hmm. it's all fine. It's no big deal. I wonder, can I do these in industrial cooker? Because usually you have to do these four in a refining forge in order to um, mix them, right? In order to get a better one. Mm -hmm. um, if you guys don't know, if you take four of the ones that you don't like and put them into a, um, put them into a forge, they will uh, convert another one. It's kind of random. Nah, they won't let me throw this in here. Um, so I'm gonna have to make a refining forge. That kind of stinks. I really didn't want to have to do that. Um, all right, you know what? It is what it is for right now. I think I'll just bag all these guys away because that's not really the focus today. Um, we'll keep our little shine horn with us though because I am I am actually liking this guy. Um, if you guys find yourself um, enjoying this episode, um, do me a favor, hit that like button. It really, really helps me out. On top of that too, guys, um, if you guys aren't subscribed to the channel or anything yet, do me a favor, hit that subscribe button. It really, really helps me out. And let me know in the comments down below if you guys are enjoying the Valentine's Day event so far. It seems really easy. Like All you have to do is just breed. You can also fish. I'm personally not going to do that. Um, it just, yeah, it's a little too long let's put it that way but um at this point guys we're gonna head over to the redwoods um because i feel like we've already had like a nine ten minute intro um so i'm gonna make my way over to the redwoods i have done a dino wipe on here so we can start getting the holiday colors well the event colors too which is really really nice um so we'll see how this goes and hopefully we can get ourselves not only another megatherium who knows, maybe along the way, because we do have to start looking at Baryonyx too. So, pretty interesting. Let's see what we can find. All right, guys, so we have our first Alpha Raptor sighting. Um, I think we're going to try to take it out. I probably should have brought the shotgun shells, honestly. Um, no, I did. Okay, good. Because <laughs> much needed there, honestly. Let's see if we can get a few shots on this thing before um, it heads on over this way. All right, we're going to go in at this point. I think I blooded it up pretty much. I think we'll be okay at this point. Um, let's see. Yeah, he's already pretty bloody. Perfect. Okay. Uh, what do we end up getting from this guy? Let's see. A Okay. I mean, 
we had better stuff, but not too, too shabby. Um, I did want the Thyla to get the final kill because I was kind of hoping it would level up or anything like that, but it is what it is, no big deal. Um, and I do realize, guys, that I do tend to ramble on in the intro, so um, I apologize. I know it was probably, uh, after editing and stuff, it's probably going to be like a five, six minute long intro, which, sorry guys, I always have a lot to talk about at the beginning of my episodes. But uh, regardless, hope you're enjoying this episode so far. As we take the really long way to to the uh, Redwoods. I did not realize. I really did not take the convenient route, but as you can see, the colors are in bloom. We are starting to get these crazy, crazy color dinos. A lot of pinks, purples, stuff like that. I probably should not have went this. Ooh, Baryonyx. 15. Nah, you suck. Damn it. Let's just get rid of you. Because you're going to be a problem right when we step into that water. All right, there we go. He's dead. Oh, no, 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 no. I didn't want the frog to... Oh, God. All right, there we go. Frog's dead, too. I eventually, we might get a frog. Um, I don't know. I've never actually tamed... Um, Did I ever tame one? I'm not familiar if I actually did ever tame one or not. If I do, I don't remember ever taming it. But I think there was always a plan to do it at some point, but we just never got around to it because I think... Um, might have been when we were over on Genesis. I think I ended up getting, like, a really good saddle in, um, I think it was probably either the last series or the series before that. And, um, no, it would have been the first series, probably. Um, but, yeah, but I don't think I ever really ended up ever getting a, um, bullfrog. Apparently they are very, very good, though, so maybe something will look forward to at some point here. Um, biggest thing that you're gonna have to watch out for going through these swamps is capros. Watch out for those. <laughs> um, and then once you get near the Redwoods, one, obviously, Thylas you have to worry about. But the other big thing is, especially on the border, is a ton of those uh, badgers. What are they called? Um, Perlovia, that's right. And, oof, my god. Um, the one thing I've realized is it's going to be actually really, really tough getting the um, bees' nests. They have to be in a really easy spot for us to grab them with the bear, I realize, because we don't really have a stair system with the bear so the bear can like walk up a stair or anything to actually get to these um and which side of the redwoods are we on okay so we're over here okay uh we gotta keep going this way we're gonna kind of loop around here but i'm gonna kind of be on the hunt for a few things along with some honey we're also going to be looking for um we're also going to be looking for obviously a megatherium would be awesome maybe even two if we can find that baryonyx would be absolutely great because um eventually getting ready for the broodmother we're gonna have to start going into a couple of the caves and a couple of the caves are like swampy caves which you're gonna want a baryonyx for that honestly we could use the thyla with some of the caves but i feel a little more comfortable um using the baryonyx honestly especially when it comes to water and stuff like that with its little um attack and everything like that oh we got a snake oh, I also want to start getting into the kibble and everything like that because this, just to give you an idea, this one's not fully imprinted. It has 311 melee damage and we're only hitting for 100 and change. Like, yeesh. Yeah, <laughs> it's a bit of a struggle, especially if we go up against something uh, a little dangerous. So, um, a lot of stuff hopefully going to get done in this episode today, or at least in the coming episodes. Uh, really start... Um, getting ourselves ready for bigger and harder bosses. Um, on top of that too, guys, I think what I'm going to end up doing is, obviously, the Manicor is really good to farm element. Um, unfortunately, I can't transfer the element over, which is a bit of a bummer. Um, I can technically break down the element, but the problem is that if I break down the element, one element will only give me 100 element dust as opposed to the 1,000 that it actually is. Um... Yeah, and that's a bit of a ripoff. I'm not going to do that. So the plan is that if I am going to end up farming the Mana Core, um, because it, it was fairly easy with the um, with the Lightning Wyvern army, um, I'm going to end up making a lot of tech stuff over there, I think, because it's just so much easier. Yeah, other things are harder to get over there, but for Pearls, we can always go over to, go over to Ragnarok. For Metal, that that's just fairly easy, so that's not too, too bad. Um, I don't know. We'll see. But... 
you know, just thinking about the future already. I always uh, have, like, future episodes in the back of my mind as I'm already doing an episode. But um, let me take a look around here. Let me see what we can find. Um, what was he killing? Oh, we got a couple terror birds. That's never fun. Um, I mean, if they're a really good level, maybe we should go for a terror bird. We have a really good saddle back at base. But um, anyways, let me look around here. Let me see what I can find. All right, guys, so we're on one of the edges of the Redwoods, and this spot in particular, I absolutely hate. There's so many of these trees here. There's a really good chance of a Thyla being in here. I haven't really seen anything, but look at all these bees' nests. They're actually pretty low, so I'm hoping if we pull out the... Oh, yeah, he's over here. Um, if we pull out the Dire Bear, there is a chance we might be able to get these with him. That would actually be pretty damn cool if we could. Um, so let's see how this goes. Um, I'm going to leave the Thyla there just in case if we need a little bit of backup. Um, you know, attack target? A whistle neutral, because if he starts getting attacked too... Hopefully he'll do something about it. Um, okay, I don't see any Thylas, but that doesn't mean they're not there. I Oh my god, I hate this spot. Um, I don't see any. I think we're good. Oh yeah, no, this is actually a lot higher than I thought. <laughs> it's the one bad thing about the island. They're all like up in the trees, so this really isn't a good map to do this on. Uh, the best map that you could... Oh god. Not Thylas, but Terror Birds. Jesus. Um, best map to honestly do this on is... Um, oh god, what is it? Probably Ragnarok. Maybe even Valguero would be a good map um, to do this on. To actually getting a lot of honey like this. Obviously, Crystal Isles would be great too. Um, especially if you can do this in the Honey Cave. But, um, yeah, I might not actually be able to do this on the island. We might actually have to take a trip over to Crystal Isles to get our honey. But, uh, we'll see what happens. I don't know. I do like using the Dire Bear, though, honestly. Because I like that it's able to pick up speed and everything. Um, yeah, I got... Ah, man. Kind of hoping we'd be able to get honey with this guy today. But it might not happen. So, for now, let's just put him away. Let's, uh, keep looking around here. If you guys are also wondering, too, what the armor is, this is actually the Mana Core skin that you get, um, after defeating the Mana Core. So, if you guys weren't sure what that was, yeah, that that's exactly what it was. Um, anyways, um, I think what we're gonna do is we're gonna head over that away a bit. Um, because not only is there Baryonyxes, every Baryonyx that I've found in here so far, I pretty much killed because there was low level. Just hoping for a higher uh, spawn to come on in. The other option is eventually heading over to Genesis, um, because there's a lot of Baryonyxes over there. So there's a chance of doing that too at some point. Um, but what I am looking for is, ooh, that's what we're looking at. Uh, but just looking for pretty much everything and anything in general. Um, we kind of just ran down the beach this way. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to check over this way, see if there's anything good. If not, then we'll work ourselves back up the river, but we'll stay on this side of the river. Um, because again, megatheriums and all that kind of stuff do spawn on this side too. Um, didn't really see a lot of them, so we'll have to see what we can find though. So hopefully we'll have a little bit better luck either over here or on our way back down the river. Alright guys, so no luck finding really anything, and um, I'm kind of thinking that we're probably going to hold off on the honey actually, because it's just going to be impossible to actually find up there. Um, we probably have to go over to a better map, like Crystal Isles probably will make a quick trip to at some point, we won't do that today. I think our main focus though at this point is getting ourselves a mate for our Megatherium, honestly. So I'm running back up river here, we don't really see anything, then what's nice about this map too is the Megatheriums will actually spawn in the snow region, so at least we have another region to cover too in case we don't find any down here. So I think that's going to be today's plan honestly, is trying to get ourselves a mate for the Megatheriums so I can start breeding them. Obviously, with the event going on, that's going to help us, too. Um, so I think that's going to be the game plan, or at least that's what I'm hoping. Um, I don't know, unless we run into something else. Maybe a uh, Uranus or... Oh, no, no, no. We won't be able to get a perfect tame on those. I think we need except uh, the Extraordinary Gibble for that. Um, all right, guys. What are the odds? 145 female. That is amazing. Okay. Oh, there's a Uranus over here. Uh, what level are you, buddy? 
40. Okay, we're gonna have to worry about that. But I'm um, gonna make a quick trap here, I think. I'm not going to... Yeah, I definitely am gonna make a trap for this. Um, I feel like I should lure it over this way. This way This way was a little bit safer. I wonder if I can almost get it up here and make like a little trap. I'm just really thinking about safety at this point. Um, you know what? I think right over here will be fine. I think this area will be okay. Uh, let me get a little trap set up. Let's see what's actually in the area first. Um, uh, you mammoths. Yeah, nothing crazy. I can make the trap right here. This would actually be really, really good. Um, he's up there. Hopefully, we can get this trap up pretty damn quick. Um, because, yeah. <laughs> we have a Uranus in the area. That's the last thing I need. So, let me get this trap going. I'll see you guys in a little bit. All right, guys, trap is made. Should be pretty good, honestly. It's a three by two. Um, I'm just hoping the thing can jump out, um, but we'll see how this goes. Hopefully not too, too bad. I'm really just worried about the um, about the Uranus that was over here, honestly. I would love to be able to get this. That would be awesome. A 145 female with our 145 male would be absolutely great. Hopefully we get good stats with it, though. Okay, so we saw it down here. I think we were further down. Or where are we up here? Oh, no. Oh, no, the Uteranus is going after stuff. Oh, no, 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 no. No, I feel like we're too far. I feel like we're further from... I feel like the Megatherium was over this way. No, 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 no. Don't tell me we lost it. Oh, no. Yeah, I think the Megatherium's gone. Oh, man, I do feel like that was the spot, wasn't it? Oh, that's so annoying. What level is the Uteranus? 40. Yeah, I don't... I'll keep looking around here. I'm still hopeful that it's somewhere around here. I don't, I don't think it is, though, honestly. Wait, 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 wait. I think I see him, guys. I think I see the mega th uh, the Megatherium. We gotta get rid of these guys, though, first. But if I can get rid of these... Uteranus is out. Perfect. Okay. Tell me that's him. <gasps> oh, thank God. Okay. I was gonna say. Oh, my gosh. That's the one bad thing about in this region. If you do not have your stuff ready to go... If you don't have your trap ready to go, there is a very good chance you will lose the dino. Um, especially with Uteranuses and stuff in this area. Oh my gosh. All right, where did she go? <laughs> As I say that... Okay, she's right here. Okay. Oof. Okay. We're good. <laughs> and the other good thing about being in the uh, cold region here is there's no bugs. So we won't have to worry about that, which is great. Um, we're going to have this girl follow us here, though. Let's see if we can... Perfect. Yeah, you're going to hit us. That's fine. All right, come on. And she's stuck. Awesome. Okay, here we go. Um, in this region, I'm not going to jump off the mount. I'm going to just stay on the Thyla at this point, but this should be pretty easy at this point. Um, on top of that, too, a little bit further up, I think I saw a, um, I think I saw an Ovis which would be great for Mutton because it would just tame her up a lot quicker. Um, we don't actually need Mutton. Um, we can do this with Prime Meat, but obviously Mutton, it's just going to take a little bit less to uh, tame her, and the process is a little bit quicker. So let's see how long this takes. It shouldn't take too crazy long. From what I remember on Scorched Earth, it wasn't that many shots, and the, uh, the Megatherium was knocked out. So hopefully... Same thing here. I'm going to have to guard this thing like crazy, though, because this area always has wolves and sabers and stuff like that spawning. So we'll see how this goes. Uh, she should be getting ready to pretty much knock out at this point anyways, or at least I hope. Yep, perfect timing. And she's out. Sweet. All right. I don't want to look over pre-tame stats. I don't want to get my hopes up or anything like that. Um, I'm going to have to nurse this girl for a bit. There is the Ovis up here, so let me just take care of that first. Um, it was a hot pink Ovis. Pink Ovis. All right, guys. And she's up. Sweet. 
Okay. Um, what I do like is having like little perches around the area, so I can actually like look out and see the dangers and everything. Um, but overall, it was actually really, really peaceful here. Okay, moment of truth. Let's check out her stats. Let's compare with the male and the female. Um, I'm going to cryo pot. Nah, you know what? We'll do it this way. Let's check her stats, and let's pull up the males here. Okay, so 5180. The male has better in um, health. Stamina? She has better. It's not that big of a deal, but it is what it is. Um, oh, wow. This this female blows. <laughs> um, the male is better in health. The male is better in melee. A lot better. Um, she is... No, she's not even as good in weight. She's got a heck of a lot of food. Wow, yeah. She's... Oof. All right, she's, she's kind of garbage, unfortunately. Um, but you know what? I think with the male, we actually do have pretty good um, stats on the male. Um, I'm going to go over that again because, again, that was in a previous episode. Um, the male has uh, 5624 in health. Uh, 1320 stam, which she has better with like 1700 or something like that, 1720 in stam, um, 1291 in weight, and 367 melee damage, which I think is really good, at least pre, um, at least like pre imprint and stuff like that, but I think what we're gonna do is we're gonna head on back to the base at this point, because we do have a male, we do have a female, we might as well start breeding them, and, um, I'll show you guys the imprinted stats, and then we can kind of figure out, um, if that's gonna be honestly good enough for like a boss fight, or do we need to go out and make Maybe get another Megatherium or two and kind of breed their stats into the mix. But on the way, if I do get any loot drops and stuff, I'll bring you guys back. We'll see what we can find. But um, yeah, I think we're I think we're gonna head on back to base and try to ooh uterus. Level 20, you suck. Um, and we're going to try to breed these guys and see what we get stats-wise. So let me get on back to base. I'll see you guys in a little bit. All right, guys, so we are finally back at base here, and we are going to start getting ready to breed these guys. So first thing that I do is um, I'll just kind of put them in a designated area. I actually have it right on over here. I do already have a um, feeding trough down, so we're all good, ready to go. Um, also, too, if you guys don't know, this this green, basically, uh, border, it just shows you the feeding area radius of this feeding trough. So if you guys don't know how to do that, just walk up to it. It'll say hide visible area, show visible area. So that's pretty much what it is. Uh, it just makes it easier to know where to put your dinos specifically. So first thing I do is I'll go up to the dinos and check specifically what stats are better on each. Now, I remember, I believe the stamina on the female was the best. Everything else on the male was was better let's just verify that quickly uh yes um so what i'm gonna do is this female has stamina at 1720 that is the better stat i am gonna rename her S1720 to let me know that her stamina is 1720 and that's what we're looking for. Now with the male, we have a better health, we have a better weight, and we have a better melee. So 5624, 5624, 1290, 366. Let me just verify that I did everything. All right, 5624, 1290, and 366. So as you guys can see, his name is now H5624 to be for the health, 5624, W1290 as in weight, 1290, and M366 as melee, 366. The reason why I do this is when you actually breed them and you look at the kid, instead of having to go back each time and check in the stats and everything, all I have to do is just check the name of the parents and I can kind of just pinpoint there um what who what got the better stats and all that kind of stuff so let me get these guys breeding the idea is that i want to get um obviously i want to get a perfect male and a perfect female which is 
perfect stats on a male, the perfect stats on a female, and preferably the same level, whatever that comes out to. But at this point, if I get a female with anything um, stamina plus whatever this has, I'm going to basically raise it on up and then eventually breed it with this one to continue the process. It just makes it easier and easier to finally get the perfect stats onto um, kids, basically. Um, the idea is that once I get a female, or it could be a male, with 5624, 1720, 1290, and 366, I can also get that too. It's just a little rarer. It's probably going to be easier getting the female with one of these stats and her stat. Um, the idea is that once both parents have the same stat, um, the kid is guaranteed to have that stat. So it just makes it easier to um, kind of knock down this process to getting the um, perfect male and the perfect female. So I'll bring you guys back in a little bit. Um, let me get the perfect male, perfect female. We'll make an offspring there. We'll imprint it and we'll check out what the final stats are. And then I'll kind of leave it up to you guys, basically. Um, once we check out the fully imprinted stats, do you guys think it's going to be good enough for the broodmother fights or... Do we need to go out and try to find a better health or a better melee? Um, right off the bat, I feel like the health is a little bit low. Um, but we'll see once it's fully imprinted and everything. I feel like the melee at 366 is pretty good. But uh, we'll see. Um, let me bring you guys back and I'll kind of let you know how the progress is going. All right, guys, so we actually got something pretty interesting here. We ended up getting a perfect male, but we also have a mutation on this guy. If you guys could see, it's a little tough to see, but he has a green nose, and also his feet are green, too. But going into his stats, everything is actually perfect. We have the perfect health. Uh, 5920 in health, perfect stem, 1720. The weight, 1290, and the melee, 366. Now, if you guys noticed, I said health at 5920. The health that we're looking for is actually 5624, which means this was a health mutation. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to let this guy grow up. We are not going to add him, though, to this breeding line until we get a perfect male and a perfect female with no mutations. It just makes things a little bit easier. Once we get the perfect male and the perfect female, and then we start breeding this guy into it, I'll go over why it's a little bit easier doing it that way and not just throwing this guy into the mix right away. So pretty cool. I'm actually, I wasn't really planning on doing mutations or anything, or at least going for mutations because... Especially with the Broodmother fights, um, one, mutations are really, really hard to get, but at the same time, you can technically take out the bosses without using mutated dinos. Like, it is possible. Um, but, so what we're going to do is we're going to let this guy grow up. He's going to hang out on the side kind of over here until we get the perfect male and the perfect female. Then we'll add him to the breeding mix. And I'll show you guys, like I said, I'll show you guys why that's a little bit better to do, why it's a little bit easier. And I'll see you guys in a little bit for an update. Alright guys, so it's been some time. Let me show you the progress that has been done. So, I do have the perfect male and the perfect female. Finally, they are both level 240 with identical stats. Uh, the health is 5624, stamina is 1720, weight is 1290, and melee is 366. Now, I have actually bred up another male. This male actually has the imprinted stats, so we can check this out. This is kind of what we're looking at. We're looking at 6740. 48 in health, 1720 stamina, since stamina does not get an imprint bonus boost, nothing, uh, 1548 in weight, and 438 melee damage. So that could be the starting line for our boss, um, for our boss line to take on the Broodmother. On top of that, though, we do have the health mutation that we ended up um, luckily getting as one of the first ones. Um, this guy ended up having 5920 in health, and to be honest, the health still seems pretty low now imprinted and everything that should put us over 7,000 in health um all the other stats will be identical to what we have on the non-mutated one um i think what i'm going to end up doing is i am going to try to get a few more mutations now i'm not going to go too too crazy i'm not going to go um syntax crazy with 10 20 30 mutations that kind of thing on them because I, I just don't, I don't have the time for it, honestly. It's a lot harder to do that kind of stuff on console as opposed to PC with mods and stuff like that. But um, what I kind of plan on doing is just right off the bat, 
the health seems really low. Now, I could be wrong, guys. Let me know in the comments down below kind of what we're looking at um, boss stats-wise in order to take on the Broodmother, but I do feel like that I want to get a few more mutations on health at least. Um, he's currently 242. I would like to get that to 250, so that is a total of four mutations. Uh, four mutations in health would be great, but if we could do at least three mutations in health and one in melee would be good. Um, but guys, let me know in the comments down below, like, what the stats are specifically that we should be looking for. Now, the plan is, eventually, health mutation, uh, mail will actually take the place of where the Thyla is right now, but for this scenario, let's just assume the Thyla is the male, um, with the mutation. What we're gonna end up doing is, we're gonna use the perfect male and the female there to continuously keep pumping out female megatheriums. I currently have two right here. They're in the process of growing up. We are not going to imprint these because these are for breeding. The idea is that the male megatherium with the health mutation will stand here. We'll have a female here. We'll have a female here. We'll have another female here, another female here, and another female here. The idea is that all five females can mate with the male at once, so it just increases our chances of getting a mutation. Um, Mutations are really tough to get. It's usually about a 5%. Um, I think it's like 5% based on each breed and everything like that. Chance of getting a mutation. On top of that, we need this thing to be a male, which is makes it a little bit tougher. The idea is that once we get another mutation, let's just say it's another health mutation, we would replace male 1, male health 1, with male health 2. And then we just keep going and going and going. And that's kind of the process, honestly, to get mutations. It is a little crazy. It does get really, really tough. Um, obviously, in the future, we do have Genesis Part 2 coming out, which is going to give us the incubator. The incubator is huge because it will tell us what mutations are on the dinos and everything before we even attempt to hatch eggs. Now, Megatheriums is different because they don't hatch eggs, but it'll help us overall with... Um, other dinos. Um, but that is, in fact, going to wrap up this episode. I hope I explained the whole um, breeding process, or at least the process I do clearly, and you guys kind of understand how I do this. Um, if you guys have any questions, just leave it down below. Um, but yeah, guys, I am going to wrap up this episode. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. If you did, smash that like button. Questions, comments, leave it down below. If you're new to the channel, enjoy my series, you're enjoying my content. Do me a favor, hit that subscribe button. It really, really helps me out. And guys, let me know what stats we should be looking at for the Megatheriums or the Broodmother fight. And I'll see you guys in the next one.